Om Tat Sat. Welcome to Gyan Bhakti. We are currently exploring the scripture Mysticism of Srimad Bhagavatam. Commentary is by my worshipful Guruji, Swami Jyotirmanand Ji Maharaj, narrated by myself, Swami Nikhilanand. We are currently exploring the episode of Krishna Destroying Jarasandh. Accepting this advice, which was in perfect accord from Uddhava with his divine plan, Krishna soon departed for the city of Indraprasth, where the Pandavas were then dwelling. After loving reunions with the Pandavas in Indraprastha, Krishna and all his queens settled down to live with the Pandavas for quite a long time. During that time, Krishna helped the fire god to destroy Khandava forest and the fire god was pleased and gave to Krishna and Arjuna various special weapons. A demon architect named Maya, Maidanu, Maidanava, he is like the demoniac architect just like uh, on the god side there is uh, another architect um, basically uh, doing these beautiful palaces and things like that. So the two forces have their own people doing multiple things who was so this demon uh, Mayadana was rescued from the terrible destruction of the forest was deeply grateful to Arjuna and the Pandavas to show his gratitude he created a special assembly hall for Yudhishthira in Indraprasth. One day, Krishna and King Yudhishthir were seated in that glorious assembly hall discussing the start of the Rajasuya Yagya. Krishna informed Yudhishthir that he would do everything possible to help him succeed in that great project. Thus saying, Krishna infused uh, special powers in the Pandavas and each Pandava was sent in a particular direction to meet various kings and bring them in friendly accord with Yudhishthira or else conquer them. The Pandavas returned victorious bringing back tremendous wealth that would be used in the Yajna. However, one personality could not be subjugated and that was of Jarasandh. Thus the moment had come in the divine plan for Krishna to bring about his downfall. The wrestling match between Bhima and Jarasandh. Jarasandh could not be killed in a normal fight because of the strange circumstances surrounding his birth and the boons he had received from Lord Shiva. As we saw previously, Jarasandh had been born of two different queens, each of whom gave birth to half an infant. Those two pieces of a child were thrown away by the despairing mothers only to be found by a wandering demoness named Jara, who just for fun joined them together into one whole child. When the demoness brought the child to his father, the delighted king named the boy Jarasand or one who was put together by the demoness Jara. So that was the miracle of her putting the two babies, uniting them and the boy came back to life. So when Jarasandh grew up and became their heir apparent to the throne, he worshipped Lord Shiva with great austerity and received the boon that he could not be destroyed by any normal process. Because he had received that form of immortality, he was not afraid of anyone. Now that Yudhishthira was preparing for Rajasuya Yajna, Krishna worked out a plan to bring about the destruction of Jarasand. With Yudhishthira's permission, Krishna, Bhima and Arjuna disguised themselves as Brahmins and went to meet with the demoniac king. They knew that Jarasand took great pride in giving gifts to Brahmins and that he would show eagerness to grant them an audience. Even though Jarasand saw through their disguise, he granted the request made by Krishna to give them the gift of a duel, a wrestling match to the death. Accepting the challenge, Jarasand chose Bhima as his opponent, somebody worthy of him. When they started fighting, terrible was that fight since both men were powerful beyond imagination. 
Bhima had the strength of 10,000 elephants put together and Jarasandh was equally as strong due to the boon of Lord Shiva. So they wrestled and fought ceaselessly for many days with no end in view. Finally, Bhima succeeded in getting the advantage over his opponent and he lifted Jarasandh by his legs and whirled them in the air. However, even at that moment, Bhima still had no idea about how he could actually kill that seemingly indestructible demon. In despair, he cast his gaze at Krishna, who then took a twig in his hands and pretended to tear it into two parts, throwing the two parts in different directions. Bhima took the hint and tore Jarasandh longitudinally into two halves, throwing the two halves in different directions so that they could not come together again. Thus, with his usual divine craftiness, Krishna worked out the death of his this wicked king. Krishna then entered into the prison where the 20,000 kings had been held by Jarasandh. They were released to return to the performance of their duties, forever enshrining Krishna in their heart because he became their savior. Mystically speaking, the destruction of Jarasandh is a fight against the most powerful enemy of mankind. The spirit of Raga and Dvesha or attachment and hatred. The two halves of Jarasan's body were put together by the demoness Jara whose name means old age. So too it is the spirit of old age that puts together those twin aspects of a human personality. Those two are attachment and hatred in every embodiment. From birth, everyone is afflicted by Raga and Dvesha, which lead a person to old age and death again and again from one embodiment to another, unless enlightenment is attained. Jarasandh had to be killed in order for Yudhishthir to perform Rajasuya Yajna. Similarly, Raga Dvesh must be removed in order for our personality to unfold in its grandeur. As long as attachment and hatred exist in a personality, they are a powerful obstacle towards attaining spiritual supremacy or one's divine emperorship through self-realization or liberation. Striving to become an unobstructed monarch through Rajasurya Yajna is an external symbol of the innate urge in a human being to realize all names and forms as his very innate self. At the level of ego, that urge expresses in the form of longing for possessing all and controlling all. However, this longing is never fulfilled because we may control some objects for a while in one embodiment, but then we enter into another embodiment and the objects escape our grasp again and again. From embodiment to embodiment, we try to establish our control over the world that we know and the task is never accomplished. On the spiritual level, however, when we attain intuitional realization of the self, we rise beyond the ego and discover I am the very reality behind all that exists. This attainment bestows upon us mystic emperorship. In this type of emperorship, we have become the entire ocean of existence. When that happens, what question is there about whether or not we have dominance over the waves? Thus, Yudhishthira's preparations for and performance of Rag Rajasuya Yajna is symbolic of the internal process of self-improvement and personality integration that prepares one for the final attainment of liberation, of becoming the divine emperor, the self who dominates the world of time and space. With this we conclude our satsanga for today and we will continue this holy journey in tomorrow's satsang. This is Swami Nikhilanand. Om Tat Sat.